Hey everybody, it's just me, Maria, again, with another video. And of course, I'm not, of course, because I'm not going to appear in this video, I have decided to use another one of my art projects to focus in on. This is a cover that I made for my Kindle. As you may recognize the person on here, that is Little Red Riding Hood. And I thought it would be kind of cute. I like art with her in it. Um, this is a Kindle cover, like I said, and I really don't know if I can, like, capture the whole thing, but anyway, that's not important. The important part is, is that I have a message, and I'm basically just cleansing my mind, as I always do. So I got up this morning on Monday, and I started sending out resumes, and, uh, you know, doing the best I can on my job search here. Um, and this video I'm going to title, Clarification. And this is for my family, uh, as well as people who know me. Um, I want to clear up some misconceptions that people may have about me. I've been told or suspected people of thinking that uh, I'm arrogant, and that's not the case. I'm not arrogant at all. Um, do I? Am I confident? Yes, I am confident, only because I know that I have good skills in my work. Um, but as far as me being arrogant when it comes to interactions, you know, when you are faced with a lot of loaded questions and people want to befriend you in a very suspicious manner, like because they feel as though uh, they want to get information on you or whatever, it, it becomes uncomfortable. So you tend to keep conversations short. You don't really want to interact with these people as much as you would somebody else who was just kind of taking things slow and asking you questions that really weren't um, intrusive then you tend to not really want to be around those kind, of, those kind of people. So if that comes off as arrogant, you know, hey, I, I apologize. But, you know, I have to protect my peace of mind. And I, I'm very picky about the kind of people that I get close to. Uh, and as I said before in one of my videos, I have very high standards. And I want my relationships to be based on common interests and things that uh, we both enjoy. And I, you know, a lot of women like to gossip, they like to backstab. <sighs> you know, I remember when I was younger, I fell into that because it, it's it's a social thing to do. You, you, you question where you fit in in life and you keep thinking, man, I need to be able to make, I mean, have relationships. So you do the things that the majority of people do around you so you can fit in. And you end up feeling not so good about yourself because I don't believe that those sort of relationships are productive, and they, they, they say a lot about the person in those relationships. Like, you know, you see two goss women gossiping, and if that's what they're into, trust me, those two women that are gossiping are gossiping about each other. And I've, I've learned through the years that I, uh, you know, friendships are very rare to find. They are very difficult to find. And especially in a world that is consumed with one-upmanship, stabbing each other in, ba in the back, and, and this sort of thing. And a lot of people think that this is normal. That is not the kind of life I want to live. Those are not the kind of people I want to be friends with, okay? I'm a very dedicated person and somebody who's extremely um, sincere, okay? So I don't want to waste my time on frivolous relationships. Arrogant? No. Um, if you ever come across one of my cover letters or something, you know, when you're trying to find a job, you have to advertise yourself. Any professional magazine will tell you that. And, you know, ad advertising yourself or any professional person who's advising another individual on looking for work is going to say you have to advertise yourself. You have to be able to make positive statements about yourself. And, you know, that's just what I try to do. Uh, but that's the only time you're ever going to hear anything that might sound arrogant, but I'm not being arrogant. I'm basically highlighting my skills, and that's all I'm doing. That is something that, you know, is required, unless you want to get looked over. But I have been looked over, but that was because I was illegally blacklisted, but we won't go into that. <laughs> uh, okay, so, um, let's see. I scratched off arrogant. Behavioral changes. And I would say that, yes, my behavior has changed to a certain degree. This is how I've always been in the privacy of people who I knew well. I've always been able to be extremely goofy, giddy, clown-like, and then turn around and be extremely serious. And that's how I fluctuate, you know, based on mood, situations, and whatever. And that's what people do. It's, it's a form of their personality. Everybody has that side. 
you know, but when you are confronted with um, what I say, you know, extreme forms of harassment or, like I said, uh, dealing with people who are coming around asking a bunch of loaded questions and that sort of stuff, you become more reserved in your behavior. And you answer questions, you know, politely and you handle things in, in a professional way. Um, and then when you're, when I'm at home, you know, I can cut loose a little bit more and I feel more at ease. You know, and one day it would be nice if I did find somebody who I could really show myself and be myself in front of that person. But, you know, like I said, that's a very difficult thing to do. So my behavior really hasn't changed. I've always been this person. Uh, I think that a lot of people who may have worked with me in the past um, never got to see, you know, the, I guess, the uh, serious side of Maria. <laughs> Because I've always been very, very goofy, and I and that's just who I am. I'm, I'm a very bubbly person. I find humor in a lot of different things. But you know, when you're on the outside, sometimes you you like I said, you encounter things that you're not really wanting to deal with, and so it's just not appropriate to be laughing at somebody who is basically trying to destroy your life. I mean, that's some of the people that I've encountered have been that way. So it's really no time to sit here and laugh and giggle and tell jokes, you know, because I'm dealing with a very serious issue. So I think that explains my behavior. So I scratched that off the list. I am still reserved, but I am a more a more assertive, okay? Um, what I mean by reserved is uh, I don't want to disclose personal information, even though there's really nothing to talk about when it comes to me. I've always been go to work, come home. But, you know, I'm not the kind of person that's going to warm up and tell people or share myself with people um, because of the situations that I've been in, you know. Um, when people are uh, kind of making you feel uncomfortable, you don't really want to, like I said, develop those sort of friendships, those sort of friendships. But I am in, I'm reserved, but I am more assertive now because I know that in my in my previous years working, you know, there was a lot of mobbing that would go on, you know, and I wasn't really sure, didn't figure the whole thing out. Now that I fully get it, um, I, I understand more. But, um, you know, before I was like, I was confused, bewildered, and oftentimes I didn't know exactly how to deal with it because I couldn't understand why people were behaving the way that they were. And uh, so you go into these phases where you're like, okay, <laughs> I don't know what to say. And you just kind of avoided conversations or interactions at all and because you were confused. And I was confused, you know. I mean, that's a natural reaction to being overwhelmed like that, you know, overstimulated with just negativity. But, you know, I, I think now, I, I, since I understand more, and little by little I've become more um, able to deal with it because I understand that, you know, this behavior is inappropriate and I feel confident in one thing and if my confidence about this issue makes me come off as arrogant that's not my point but I know I'm right about this because it's legal I mean it, it's within the structure of the law and also the very fact that um, you know it has affected my life throughout the years and um, these sort of issues that crop up in the workplace I started realizing, you know, through research that I'm not the only person who's dealt with this, you know. It is a very common uh, occurrence, and it's sad that it's common because, you know, it really affects a lot of good people and puts them in situations like this. And so I realize now that it's not my fault. It's not my fault. And I actually feel better in some ways about it because I kept thinking, gosh, you know, I just can't understand it. I, I had a job in, in this town in Chatsworth, and it just like all fell to pieces all within like one night, people's behavior. And it wasn't based on my work, because my work was always good. Um, but it was based on the social interactions that were going on in the workplace. Um, that was beyond my control. Beyond my control. A lot of the things I'm sure that was being held against me, just like all the other places that I've been since all those other places. <laughs> um, we're based on petty things, you know, whether that be my shoes, my clothes, you know, and I had no control over any of that, you know, because a lot of the things that I realized that my family held against me 
were things that were in my past, like things that I did when I was a teenager or in my early 20s, and they just don't matter. You know, they don't matter. And so, you know, when you have a very low opinion of a person, you share your negative feelings with other people, and that's a social cancer that spreads. It's a, it spreads like crazy. And so when you have a person who says or they feel as though they have some sort of authority over you, making phone calls to employers and basically using their negative viewpoint against you, um, and then the other person on the line, you know, it becomes a social cancer, and they immediately start turning against you too, you know. I understand why stalking is illegal. I understand it for several reasons. It's very destructive to a person's life. Um, what else? Oh, I haven't changed. Physically, I am pretty much the same person. Um, I look pretty much the same as I did when I first moved to this town. The only thing that really has changed about me physically is my hair, okay? Because I used to wear braids. You know, I would say, like, <laughs> the first time I got braids back in 2003, I was just crazy of them. And I really hated, really hated the fact that I couldn't keep them in my hair, like, 365 days of the week, you know, because I felt like that was the most manageable hairstyle for me. And I love braids. But I do know that, you know, my first experience with wearing braids really freaked a lot of people out. You know, a lot of white people were kind of amazed that I would actually wear that. I, I feel as though maybe they felt as though I wasn't trying to assimilate, I guess. I, that's not the case. You know, black hair is a very complex issue. And um, I just knew it gave me a break. I mean, I didn't have to do anything with it other than wash it. It was great, you know. Um, but I used to switch a lot between braids, my hair, and, you know, some form of extension or whatever. Now I'm, I pretty much have selected two looks that are commonplace that I think are appropriate um, for the workplace, you know, based on my race and my hair pattern and my, you know, the kind of hair that I have as a black woman. And um, I have been more stable as far as fluctuating so many times. And that was something I think I was known for, but I was in an experimental phase for a very long time. I never really was into my hair, like, when I was growing up. I just really figured my mother would deal with it, you know. <laughs> but as you get older, you know, it's just like, wow. You know, so you experiment, and so now the exper experimenting is over. I think I have found looks that are good for a black woman who works in the office. Um, but I still miss my braids, I do, and I, I look forward to retirement age because I wonder if I could ever wear them again. <laughs> I, I do like them, I do. I like braids, you know. For, for a girl who, I enjoy things like makeup and stuff like that, but I don't like being in the mirror and fixing myself up all the time. And, you know, my hair is different, you know, I, and it does take a long time. So why do I want to deal with that all the time? I don't. Okay, so matching that off. Okay, so my last name. Okay, I think I went into this before, and I think this is something that's been held against me. And like I said, marital status is not something that should be considered in, in the um, workplace. But um, uh, my, my issue was legal issues, and... Uh, really nobody's business, you know, and I just, I'm like so shocked that that would even be like brought up, you know, especially when I've explained it to at least a few people, you know, I have talked to people about it, um, uh, about why my name is not the same, or was not the same, it, it's now changed, but I have to get it legally done, um, a lot of people understand that, you know, uh, there's, I've seen marriages where that has taken place. As a matter of fact, like I said, I babysat for somebody. I remember working with a couple that was like that. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's intrusive. It's extremely intrusive. And all I can say is that it, it's offensive, too. <laughs> it's like, you know, talk about nosy, you know? Really, it's uh, not cool. But my name is now going to be switched to my husband's name. I am out of work right now. I don't have money for a birth certificate. And... <laughs> Until I do, I am his last name, I'm using the last name, his last name, um, on documents, but nothing on legal reasons, for legal reasons, okay? I am not, le until I legally get it straight with the Social Security Administration, I am still going to have to use that for banking financial transactions and other issues, like, um, yeah, for banking, I can't do anything about that until I can legally get my name changed. So on applications, um, my name will appear as Gordon. <clears throat> on resumes it will appear as Graham. I think that is something that is very common 
uh, among, I, I've seen that happen, you know, I've worked in, in the past, of course, where people got married and, and then they just, you know, oh, everybody understands that this is your common use name until it becomes legal. So I think that pretty much sums everything up. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think that I've changed a lot since I was in high school. But I've also remained the same, you know. Um, I don't think I'm as explorative as far as like things like relating to spirituality or anything. I'm comfortable, you know. What I mean, I'm comfortable, you know. Um, I think I've explored enough, you know, in my life, and I it was important for me to do that, you know. I mean, you're born, you know. Um, I was basically born knowing that there was something more than me, you know. And I think that a lot of people feel that or sense that when they're when they're children. And I remember a time when I was younger, you know, even thinking about what would it be like to be a nun, you know. <laughs> I didn't know much about the Catholic faith or anything, but I kept thinking you know, that sounds interesting. It sounded interesting to me because I felt like living a life 100% in a, in a state of mind of servitude to towards something that's bigger than you. <laughs> you know, would have been ideal for me at that time, you know. And in some ways it still is. I mean, it's still a part of me, but um, I don't think it's something that uh, other people can understand completely. But I'm comfortable with it, you know. Um, spirituality, uh, God has always been, like, top priority in my life. I don't need to tell other people about that. I don't. You know, if my, fa my siblings can think back you know, they'll remember that I've always had an interest in religion in some way, shape, or form. You know, they know that, uh, you know, my family probably remembers me studying with Jehovah's Witnesses, going to different churches, experimenting, you know, that was important to me, very important. And I wanted to be very clear about my spirituality, and I wanted to know everything. And I, I realized, as a human being, there's no way I could know everything, you know, that's the difference between what makes the Almighty, Almighty, and me, just this person here on Earth. I mean, I'm only so, I only have so much, you know. And my understanding on things that matter, that relate to uh, God, you know, is just uh, as a human being, you know, it, it's, it's limited. It's very limited, you know. But uh, I'm in awe of of those powers. I just am, and so. Uh, that hasn't changed, you know, since I was a child. But as far as me being as experimental with it and studying all these different books, I think I've learned enough. <laughs> I think I've learned enough. And uh, I am who I am, you know. And whatever that feeling is, it has driven me all my life. And that's, that's pretty much how, I, how I've always been. And I will always be that way. And I'm very grateful for that. Because um, I think that's about it, you know. Um, still love music, still like watching shows, still things that used to irritate me like freeze frames on television shows, that still pisses me off. I don't like any of that. You know, maybe that's one, of the, that's one other contributing factor for me to stop watching television altogether because I just can't stand stuff like that. I mean, I, I do watch some TV, you know, but uh, I stopped watching TV back in the 90s, you know, pretty much it just slowly but surely just kind of tapered off. And then it was just fine with me, you know. But, you know, my husband does watch a few shows that I watch with him. And he'll get me to watch a few shows. There's been some really cool shows that he showed me, you know. But, uh, you know, hopefully if and when I can get back to work, you know, and I can afford things, you know, like some channels on my TV set. I personally wouldn't watch them, but I would really think that my husband would. And while he would be indulging in these shows, I'm sure I would take a glimpse of something. Now, if they brought back that show, um, Unsolved Mysteries, and made a newer version of it, I would so be into that show. I used to love that show. I like those kind of shows, mystery shows. Um, I like documentaries a lot. Um, what else do I like? Documentaries, mystery shows. Yeah, Unsolved Mysteries shows. Um, yeah, and, and like I said, documentaries. And I do watch a lot of old television shows, but I've seen a lot of them already before. And some of them I haven't. You know, sometimes I keep thinking, man, this movie was came out in 1954. I never heard of it, and I'll watch it just because I never heard of it. I'm just like, wow, I never heard of that movie before. So I'll watch it, you know, and I look at the clothes. I look at the clothes, the women, the way they were dressed, and I think, wow, you know, look at the different styles. and You know, I, I do enjoy watching old classic movies and music. And 
Okay, you know, there's, in some ways I've changed a lot, in some ways I remain the same. Or if I have remained the same, it's more like I've reached a certain limit of what I used to indulge in, but I'm pretty much still running on the same value system, <laughs> if that makes any sense. But anyway, I'm going to shut this video down. Just want to do a quick uh, video, kind of get some things off my chest and try to get more positive about my job search. You know, I am, I am a very hard, like I said, I'm a very hard worker and I care about the quality of my work. I really do. And, uh, you know, I feel as though I shouldn't have to feel so stressed out to have a basic human need met where everyone else seems to just be able to hop, skip, and jump from one job to another. And I'm just like, okay, I shouldn't have to struggle because I think my work speaks for itself. The very fact that I'm sitting here making these videos and talking about legal issues relating to work, that shows on one side that I understand administration and business. I do understand that. I've taken a bunch of tests in this town, okay? I think I've proven my accounting skills. I'm going to tell you what, anytime you look at my resume and you'll see that I've worked jobs for, for three, four years or whatever, they're not going to keep somebody on their payroll if they don't know how to do their job, okay? So I've been doing my work for many years. I'm, a, I'm very qualified to do my job. And I think an employer could feel very comfortable with me because um, I don't make waves. I'm very peaceful. Um, I like to be helpful, you know, and I like to contribute. And I don't need a pat on the back. You know, I think my, one of my, my employer went berserk. Um, I think my sibling was encouraging me to do that, not giving me credit for my work. I'm not going to go into the whole thing. But, you know, what the offense of is, it's not because I needed to hear it, but I needed to know that I was going to be evaluated fairly. And I think a lot of employers, you know, when, when, when you're in a mobbing process and people are taking credit for your work, that is one of, that is one of the phases of mobbing. And, <laughs> and um, you know, I think, you know, initially they thought that I was saying that, and I wasn't saying it in front of them. I was trying to have discuss this with my boss because I was not happy with the fact that if he thought that this other person was the one who was contributing or, 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 or coming up with these ideas, then that put me in a very unfortunate situation when you're getting reviews and being evaluated. And so it's really important for that reason. And I also suggest to managers, you know, if they do have a good employee and they really like that person, it's best not to discuss those things with other employees, okay, in their face, you know, because what you're doing is you're stimulating a, a very competitive spirit that it can be very malicious, and it's bad. It's not a good thing at all. You know, that's just, one, that's just an, a, an advice. I've seen this happen, like, in schools where, you know, there's a good ki a kid and the teacher's, like, you know, always praising him in front of the class, and he that kids label teachers pet or something like that, and people start, you know, hurting that person. In this case, I wouldn't say that my boss really ever acknowledged the work that I did, which frustrated me, frustrated me to no end. And I thought it was really wrong of him to assume that it was about my ego. And see, I think that's where a lot of managers fall short. They fall short on this issue because when somebody wants to get recognized for their work, they don't necessarily want you to hand them an award at a podium or something like that in an auditorium or anything. They're not asking for a certificate to put at their desk. They want to make sure that they have the security of continually, continually working and that you're acknowledging their skills so that you give them some sense of security. Now, I understand we live in a world where their security is very rare, okay? It is extremely rare, okay? Because, you know, the economy falls, it flips out, and it does all kinds of weird things, okay? And sometimes, you know, things like uh, layoffs or stuff, stuff that occur, things like that occur. But people want to make sure that they are being evaluated based on the correct things, and, or they're being evaluated, period, okay? So if you have ideas, you don't, it's not about getting a pat on your back. It's about knowing that you're going to continually have a job. And that's, what the, that's the important thing. And so when you give this sort of feedback to your employees, your employees feel better. They feel more confident. They feel more comfortable. And it will show in their quality of their work as well as their interactions. So I think that's really important. That's another thing I wanted to clear up. Um, I think that uh, <sighs> mobbing is a very destructive behavior. In an, in an office environment, and it really bothered me that I contributed so much and uh, was recognized so little. 
and, you know, I, I'm just amazed at it. And, you know, like I said, my dad told me a long time ago that people were going to be like that, but I never, never thought that that would happen to me. Never, never. Very naive about some things. And, you know, my mom always thought that I was a very wise person. At least that's what she said. Now, she was like my sister and thought I wasn't smart enough to have a job or whatever. I don't know, okay? But at least she bullshitted in front of me enough. But, <laughs> but, um, you know, I, uh, I I have uh, I I I think I've always been a pretty good uh, judge of character around people, but uh, you know sometimes you know you you get slapped in the face with something that you just never considered the possibility of before, and I think that's why there's a lot of shock involved in this. But anyway, wrapping up this video, just wanted to talk about my feelings for this Monday, and I wish you all well. Take care. Bye bye.